Last year this session was very popular. I read it somewhere. Perhaps people will come after lunch. In this session, first of all, welcome. In this session, we are going to examine rest in regards to employment and human resources. The key actors include energy production and investment companies, equipment manufacturers, technical universities and educational institutions. We have four panelists representing these institutions. I am going to give the floor to them according to the program I have. Banu Hanım, she is general manager in energy HR. Miss Banu Akdoğan, she will be our first panelist. Then head of department of energy systems engineering in Bahçeşehir University. Emin Tajar is with us. Human resources manager in Nordex Energy. Miss Oya. Yarsen and finally finally energy saw HR and administrative affairs group manager Sarkan Özkaya is with us we are going to take the questions after the presentations Banan the floor is yours First of all, I would like to welcome you all. I would like to give brief information about the researches conducted about the conditions of rest in the world and in Turkey, wind energy and employment potential, and career opportunities in wind energy. First of all, when we ask why wind energy, it is a clean energy source. It is a natural and limitless source and land-friendly source with no carbon emissions. It contributes to energy safety and diversifies energy demand. Despite traditional fuels, it decreases fuel costs and energy costs due to its structure. And it provides a an infinite source that can be used anytime, its modularity and fast installed manufacturing facilities and finally it provides employment and added value to the region. When we take a look at the conditions of the wind energy, according to the 2012 report of the Global Wind Energy Council, it, is, it was possible to produce electricity with the least carbon costs that provides new jo job opportunities with green expansion of wind energy. According to the same report, the three big markets that determine the future of wind energy is Europe, US and China. Especially according to 2012 data, the electricity production capacity of the wind energy is much higher than that obtained with nuclear and coal. According to 2013 Energy Outlook report of the US Energy Information Administration, the wind energy will grow by 44% in the world until 2040 and this wind energy is commencing under the leadership of Germany and Spain in Europe and this will be promising for Turkey. In the report of Wind Directions magazine 2013 September edition published by EVA, Turkish wind energy sector will continue to grow by overcoming bureaucratic obstacles and developing and sustaining unlicensed electricity production and this will positively affect employment. Consumption, sorry, the extinction rates of the energy re resources are about 200 years for coal 65 years for gas, 
40 years for petrol and fuel and infinite for the wind. When we look at the condition of wind energy in the in Turkey, according in parallel to the fast economic development, the energy requirement of Turkey is growing rapidly. Till 2020, it is anticipated to install 55,000 megawatt capacity. And according to the data of EMRA, the investments that will be conducted till 2030 will exceed 300 billion, billion dollars only in electric. In parallel to this, as the sector continue to develop and grow, it is required to establish a more competitive and transparent market and the conversion of investments into employment is realized more rapidly. Environmental consciousness, Kyoto Protocol, carbon tax, renewable energy investments and energy safety and energy trade. In these, the international agreements enables cooperation opportunity and creates new employment areas. When we look at the employment potential of the wind energy, renewable energy sources have great potentials in creating employment and the employment was doubled in 2004 and 2009 and it continues. World investment in wind energy is 2.1 million. It is 6.3 million in solar and 12 million in biofuel, so there will be an additional 20 million employment. According to the data of South Marmara Development Agency, 400 to 450 wind power plants are planned to be installed. The average employment at each one is 12. The employment will be 5,500 to 6,000 in the new power plants. During construction, 6,500 employees will work provisionally. When we look at the career opportunities in wind energy, we need to focus on green work at first. Green works have a wide range from agriculture to construction and from law to education. And a number of related educational institutions are growing. There is a great attention to renewable energy programs of universities, especially for the engineering students. According to the Ring Jobs Company survey in the US, the number of employment in the world wind sector is 2.5 million. The first one is China, then the US, Brazil and Germany. According to Energy Revelation 2012 report, 1.7 million people will be employed till 2030. Till 2020, 520,000 people will be employed. And there will be 60% increase in offshore wind sector. Renewable energy consultancy, renewable energy engineering, wind energy specialization, ring marketing consultancy, green HR management, environment and energy law specialization, environment and organic agriculture engineering, nature life coaching, green tourism and holiday specialization. These are the green professions. In career opportunities, common characteristics of job posting in the world and in Turkey are experience and competency in the sector. Employment ratio of wind energy is found higher than that of nuclear and thermic energy. According to Euroactive News, this clean technology which is providing employment to 4 million people currently will provide 20 million people in 2020. In the Turkish wind energy market, here are a couple of job postings. These are wind turbine technicians, energy project manager, mechanical engineering, electric electronic engineering, static load engineering, project manager, aerodynamic engineering, civil engineering, maintenance technicians, head expert, quality system expert and job sa work safety experts. When we look at the job postings in the world, wind these include wind farm developers, wind planner, weather forecast analysts, technical sales manager, offshore wind agreements manager, planning wind project managers, and head of inspection. When we look at the common characteristics of job postings both in the world and in Turkey, graduation, this includes graduation from in engineering faculties, at least one or one to five years of experience, 
preferably experience in Puma preparation and worksite agreement experience uh, and to recite near the project areas, knowledge about energy market and related markets, no travel restriction, completion of military so service for male candidates, competence in foreign languages and being, being adaptable to teamwork. As for the specific characteristics, these include, as you see in the presentation, to be mostly in every step of projecting software and applications, have competency in software of the sector, yes. When we look at our opportunities and suggestions in wind, these include increase in foreign investors, the elimination of legal and technical obstacles, and this will contribute a lot to the development of wind energy. It is possible to double the number of employees rapidly as the new licensing process begins, mainly including wind, geothermal, hydroelectric and solar energy. The investments in renewable energy will provide more space for green professionals in transportation, construction, agriculture, etc. in middle, mid and long term basis. We should give utmost importance to humans to create the right human resources in energy. Technology, legal and academic studies for its employment will be realized with the contribution of private sector and related departments of universities. Sustainability will be possible with the shaping of business models and planning according to the requirements of next generations. And active participation of human resources is important. And at Energic, we, we are maintaining our studies to contribute through employment and training. And I thank you. Thank you, Bana Hanım. Bana Hanım summarized it well, the potential of rest in the world and in Turkey. Now, from the perspective of university, our teacher, the lecturer will inform us. First, I prepared a lot, but when I realized that we, we can only speak for about 15 or 20 minutes, I will try to keep short. We will have time, dear lecturer. You can take it longer. No, it will be efficient. Okay. Ban Hanum adheres to her time. Yes. So, dear chairman, ex a distinguished participants, first of all, I would like to talk about why this energy engineering appear. Where does it come from? Then, I will talk about the status of universities in energy. I am Emin Tajar. I am the head of head of department of energy systems engineering in Bahçeşehir University. Actually, I am an electric engineer. I used to be. I mean, I had worked as a lecturer in Istanbul Technical University for 40 years, and under a new title, I changed my university to Bahçeşehir and become head of department. So after this elevation, my perspective has changed. I wonder about the status of energy system engineering. Yes, as we all know, we are living in a world integrating at an economic, social and ecological balance. 
From now on, this is important for us. There are five main titles showing the status in the world. When we look at the world under this title, on one side there is a political and economic integration. On the other hand, we are facing a world with cultural and political interactions with the impacts of multinational companies and then international NGOs in regards to international trade, software, employment activity and technological sharing. And this is what we call the global village. It is already established. One of the key aspects in the creation or process of this global village is energy. It plays a role both in the continuation of the process and in the creation of the process. Energy sector is very critical. So energy should be supported by political, economical and trade relations. We now see their influences. So we realize the importance of energy. When we look today, the reason for war and peace is energy. Hope nobody will condemn me. This is what we are experiencing lately. Again, as we know, the developing economy of our country, the improving industry, the increasing population and its geopolitical status give us a new perspective. Thus, we realize how important energy is for 1, 2, 3, 4 arms here. We all know this. We all read news in newspapers about this. When we look at the geopolitical position of our country, on one side there are the energy-rich Middle Eastern and Middle Asian countries, and on, one, on the other side there is energy-poor but economically rich Western countries. We have to form a bridge between these two. Hence, this is the policy. As you see, world economy, developing industry, increasing population. There is a prosperous domestic in market. This market demands increasing amount of and complex energy. So, the politics is clear. We need to meet this expectation. While meeting this, which is, this is a critical point, we are obliged to support this with technical, economic and legal infrastructure. Who is going to do this? Our colleagues talk about it a, a bit, then the universities meet this. So, this is the main mission of universities. No, for, from now on, you cannot be an engineer without this. The three titles you see out there. Y yes, we say that what is necessary for human sustainability is energy. Energy is a must for sustainability. When we take a look at the energy, there is one thing we use as fuel energy and also as electric energy. Again, as our colleague said, and as you heard in the previous meetings, production, transmission and efficient use should be sustainable. This is the critical point. I can also say that while saving, we engineers take this into granted. First of all, energy should be relevant. Secondly, it should be of good quality. Thirdly, it should be cost effective. And finally, it should be sustainable and environment friendly. Thus, one of the targets of this congre Congress is to put environment friendly wind energy into agenda. Thus, who are going to play roles in realizing these things, the energy engineers. Although I am an electric engineer, after indulging into such things, I realized how energy engineering is important. Important is, when we look at the engineering, we can include electric engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering as the sub-branches of energy. This was what we told. Now the things have changed, but now energy engineering should be constructed on electric engineering, mechanical engineering and chemical engineering and energy planning should go alongside with it. They should know the market, they should know the economy. Then who is going to do this? The amount of investments are becoming higher. What does employer want? An employer wants someone who knows all of them. So. Again, here comes competent energy systems engineering. 
Now, actually, I can also emphasize this as such. I would like to give you a simple example. Think about a thermic power plant. In the creation process of this thermic power plant, a feasibility analysis should be conducted. Production planning should be conducted. Supply should be done. Who is going to do this? Or who used to do this? Industry and in operation engineers. There comes the burning period. It should be inspected and controlled. So he, these, these are done by chemical engineers. Now I'm going to convert the energy I obtained to the mechanical energy. Here comes the mechanical engineers. I did this, now I will convert it to electric for the generators. I need to connect it to mains unit. I'm going to distribute it, transmit it, control it. Energy systems engineering, which is not interdisciplinary, but a discipline within itself, is doing all of this. This is what it should do. Here we can perceive the importance of energy systems engineers. As I said, of course, electric engineers, mechanic and chemical engineers can indulge into these business businesses, but they should strengthen their infrastructures. They should learn about market economy, investments, feasibility reports, all of this. Now, up to this point, I tried to put the importance of the operation and energy engineering. We are currently trying to influence our students accordingly. And the world is increasingly in need of such engineers, such competent engineers. Just let me briefly mention, talk about the Bachelor University. It is, pardon me. It is a foundation university established in 1999. I'm skipping this. It has 10 master's degree engineering faculties. I mean not all, but one of one one of them is the engineering faculty. There are ten departments. One of them is engineering systems engineering. Sorry, the energy systems engineering. And this de this department is the first to be established in Turkey, 2006. It started to accept students. Today it hosts three pro three professors one associate professor and two assistant professors. This has a relative rich stuff for us. When you look at the professors, I am an electrician, one of them is mechanical and the only the one is from energy. When I look at the associate professor, it is from the industrial engineering. The assistant professors, one is chemical, the other one is energy. So again, there is an integration. We tried to form this structure to reflect the integration to our students. I guess we are successful in this. Now, we are going to take a look at the educational status of energy engineering in Turkey. I want you to learn something. In the second half of 2012, we conducted an, an analysis in Turkey. Because we think that we are responsible for defining the future and structure of energy engineering. Then, by examining the website of the General Directorate of Higher Education, we realized that there are currently over 60 institutions that offer training for energy systems engineering. We gathered them all and make a workshop. We submit this workshop to them and and it influenced them a lot. So they requested me to present it to you. This, this is what I feel like it's my duty. When we look at the distribution of energy systems engineering according to faculties, there are 30 faculties that offer education for energy system engineering. 21 of them are in the energy system engineering sorry the in, in the engineering faculty the and nine of them are at the technology faculty 70 percent of technology faculties no it's not the case engineering faculties constitute 70 percent whereas technology faculties faculties constitute 30 percent of this education now let me look 
Another analysis is the license program in energy. This is an overview. Sorry, this is a master's program. And it includes very divergent items. Their names are different. When we analyze them, actually, in the analysis we conducted, although their names are different, they are providing this, they are um, teaching the same subjects. And some of them include specialization. Look, there are nine institutions in energy systems engineering. Here there are two. So these are changing. They have different characteristics. Again, when we look at their percentages, we see that 35% of it is basically on the energy systems engineering. Again, our colleagues said, we realized that when you look at the universities, they started to focus more on specialization in these divisions. While students are accepted to this department, they can be either mechanical engineers and civil engineering students can also come. And then they integrate on the knowledge I said just a couple of minutes ago. Okay, I'm skipping this. I'm skipping this too. Now, another educational institution is the vocational high schools. Yes, vocational high schools. In our country, occupational high schools are also offering energy system engineering education in within universities. Again, as far as I can see. Actually, I took some notes, but okay. 157 vocational high schools are providing energy system engineering education. This is a very huge number. Again, when you look at the content of the education, we see that members of almost all faculties are full. Students are preferring this. And when you look at this, you can see that the number of students is very high. Again, the title is focused on electric and energy here. 92% of them are trying to specialize in the subjects related with electric. So, up to now, I made a numeric summarization. Although this is a short presentation, I guess this still reflects the conditions of our universities right now. Now, let's take a look at the lectures. It is very complicated. They are so much. They are very independent. And they are unaware of each other. So we thought that let's conduct a workshop. Let's come together, agree on some common ground, do something for the good of our country, for the sake of our country. So this is our workshop. As a result of our workshop, while we are assessing electric engineering education, we realize that only 14 universities have information on their websites. Others haven't, haven't published anything yet. This proves the or shows the languidness of the universities. But I guess in in the last year, in 2013, it became faster. When I look at the number of attendances here, I see that energy in the engineering is popular. So actually, the industry is challenging you into this. As long as the market continues to challenge you, we will start to look at universities at, from different perspectives. Then we said, how are we going to give all of these lectures? So let's gather them in four main groups. Mathematics and basic sciences, basic engineering lectures, humanities and social sciences, occupational and engineering lectures. As you may remember from your lectures, these four main topics are general. These are also classifications agreed by ABET, UDEK, the Turkish Entire University Coordination and Accreditation Agencies. In these groups, mathematics and basic sciences, you see I told you there are 14 universities, I told, I told you about 14 university. there is 15 and 16 lectures that which are chemistry, physics, differential, linear algebra and so on. 
Yes, of course, mathematics is a must in engineering. That's why we need to teach this to the students. Because in some universities there are the differential no, there are no differential equation. A student who don't know who doesn't know differential equation, how is she or he going to make the burning phase? How is he or she going to solve the system? All you see as you see this is interesting. Yes, I summed them up here. Mathematics one, mathematics two, calculus one, calculus two, or we can say physics one, physics two, and chemistry. All are uh, available. Some universities have mathematics three, so we thought it ref this reflects some of the equations. Some some universities give chemistry lecture in two separate lectures. Actually, this depends on the characteristics of the university. If there is chemistry expert in the department, then they focus on chemistry. If there is civil engineer, then they focus on civil engineering. If it's electric, then they focus on electric. However, as I said before, we told to our colleagues that we should meet on common grounds regarding what the energy system engineers should know and what we should teach them. Another subject is basic, basic engineering lectures. Here you see there are plenty of lectures. Are the kids learning all of them? No, they are not. They learn only the selected ones. So what are we doing? We said, now let's subgroup them. What does thermodynamic include? For instance, thermodynamic 1 and thermodynamic 2. The students should know about the matter and energy. So we grouped these lectures under thermodynamics. Then comes resistance. An electric engineer does not need endurance, the resistance. A chemical engineer does not need an resistance, but this student is going to be a energy in engineer. What does the wind is doing? What do you call it? It is going to detect the pole. So the student should know the resistance more or less. Now. We added mechanics, static and resistance tests to this group. Then we come to the flow mechanics. Look how these lectures seem co so comprehensive and interdisciplinary. But we are saying that energy system engineering should be an engineering that has a discipline in itself. Now, in fluid mechanics, there are fluid mechanics, fluid dynamics and hydraulics. There are also other lectures, here you can see, computer programming, there are must-have lectures. There are lectures that an engineer must know about, computer, economics, material technology. Ho hope I'm not boring you, I just want you to learn, so that you have an opinion about it. Yes, okay, engineering and... Go, if we go back, these are occupational and engineering design lectures. What are the lectures that a energy engineer should learn? Here is energy systems, heat and mass transfer, introduction to energy systems, electromechanic energy, machine elements, etc. So these are the subgroups. So you see that in energy systems there is renewable energy, conventional energy, energy and the like. These are the lectures we added. These should be available. A student should know what renewable is and should know the conventional also. A student should have an idea, more or less. Then the burning systems. In this group, fuel and burning, burning technology, coal technologies, these are the lectures. Then direct heat and mass transfer waste utilization, etc. So now we come to energy management, this is also important. Energy management, energy economy, investment analysis. The students should know this, them, should know them. Our colleague mentioned, if a company is going to hire an engineer, 
and that engineer should know all of this. She talked about it more comprehensively. Now, an electric engineer, mechanical engineer, cannot possibly know all of them. They should train themselves personally. So we say that then the energy systems engineer should learn all of these subjects. So this goes on and on. I'm going to open this now. Again, the percentages. You see the percentages in lectures in the energy systems engineering. This is the condition of 14 universities. But as a result of our analysis, we renewed our program. Not only the Turkish universities demanded our program, but also the international, the foreign universities demanded our program. Because again, when we look at the international universities, there is no university that individually offers energy systems engineering alone. These, this again offered under electric engineering, chemical engineering or mechanical engineering and under industrial engineering. However, as the systems are increasingly gaining importance, they also started to create energy systems engineering departments. They even started to establish energy centers. I'm skipping this too. I'm skipping this again. Now there's humanities and social sciences. While the high education law is being created, two Turkish lectures, two revolution history, two English. Yes, these lectures should always be available. All the universities have these lectures. We also added some other lectures regarding the humanities and social sciences. But in ABES criteria and UBEC criteria, then of course our students are constantly changing. So the Americans and Europeans say that the 25% should be the elective courses. Some of them are here. Some of them are the elective courses that a student can choose according to personal of interest. I'm skipping this too. Okay, I'm finishing up. So we see, these are the universities to give lectures. There is a lot of universities. I'm finishing up. First of all, we should define energy engineering. This is what I want from you. Today, we wrote to 50 private institutions and public institutions. We told them, yes, this is the energy engineering. This is its definition. These are our expectations. So please recognize this definition. But still, the general manager of renewable energy or Turkish Electrical Association is writing to me today. The number of graduate students is increasing. They do not give the job posting when they apply for the job. So what I request from you is if you are looking for an engineer about this, please use the term energy systems engineering too. I greet you with respect. Thank you, lecturer. He explained the process and the curriculum of the university in detail. We thank you again. As a person who underwent such processes, there were so many lectures that I could be able to finish all of them during master's and doctorate. So it takes time. Thank you. Now, Oya Hanum will going to discuss this subject on the perspective of equipment manufacturer. Welcome you all again. I am the HR manager of a company operating in the installations of wind energy in the energy sector. I will talk about the real life after Banu Hanım and Emin lecturer. While waiting for my turn, I try to calculate the number of the attendances here. I guess more than half is university students. Am I wrong? Can I learn which universities you are from? Sorry? Shurnak University. You came from Shurnak? For this Congress? So nice. I congratulate you. You? Islam University. Environmental Engineering. Welcome. And you? 
Istanbul Technical University. The department? Yes. Yellow University. I mean the Yellow University. You? Bahçeşehir University Electric Electronic Engineering. I guess your department department your student. Welcome you one by one. We haven't encountered any electric or mechanical engineer yet. En energy systems engineers are more aware, more contributor. This is a good thing of course. I would like to give some information about Nordex energy. And as I said I will talk about the real life. I will try to match what Banu Hanım and Emin lecturer told told us a bit with real life, the ordinary life. Who are who are we? Nordex Energy has been operating since 1975 by 85. It was initially founded as a Denmark company, but then sold to German and became a German company. So what are we doing? We are a manufacturer of international wind energy. Our manufacturing facilities are in Germany, US and Germany. Our headquarters is in Germany, Hamburg. As of 2013, we have globally 2,500 employees. The total install capacity is currently 8,500 8, kilowatt. We have almost 5,300 turbines. In this slide, you can see the locomotive com countries. Actually, we exist in almost 20 countries. Turkey is one of the locomotive countries among them. Later on, I will talk about it in detail. Here in this slide, you can see the countries where Nordex turbines are present. Right now, we dominate one third of the market. So, in Turkey, one turbine out of three belong to Nordex. But when we look at the year-end data, we will become the market leader. The distribution of our power plants in Turkey, as you can see, our power plants are mainly distributed in the Aegean region. But this is not something specific for us. The competitors in this sector and the investors, when we look at their power plants, we can see that they are mainly at the Aegean region because in the wind map of Turkey, the Aegean region is the most suitable region for the wind. I guess it extends at most to Antalya, but if I'm not wrong. We have some sites in the Black Sea and Eastern regions. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't obtain data as much as you do. I mean the numeric data. And for the global employment in wind energy, according to the 2011 data of International Employment Organization, employment due to wind energy in the world is 740,000. We have some data beginning from 2005. When we look at the yearly distribution, we can see that the employment rate has been growing rapidly. So, who are the actors in the world? Here we mainly see the European countries. The leader country is Denmark. I am sorry, it is Germany. It is followed by Denmark and Spain. So, these three countries constitute 73% of the whole employment for the wind energy in the world. As I'm not a technical person, I cannot figure this out with such numbers, but when we attend university days, career days, I have only one answer to the question. What is the future of Turkey in wind energy? Take a look at these countries. This is enough. These countries are saturated with the wind. The market in Turkey is very wide. Investments have started very recently. In order to foresee the future of Turkey, it will be efficient to look at the big actors such as Germany, Denmark and Spain and the others. Green employment. 
there is such a trend now. This is the mission of everybody and us who are working in not only in wind sector but also in renewable energy. Besides our professions, in, this also includes you, university students, we all have a mission of green. So, when we look at the past, how did this green employment develop? There is a law very critical put into effect in 2005. This is the Renewable Energy Act. With this Renewable Energy Act, not only the number of investments increased, but also the focus on employment has also proportionally increased. When we look at the data, how is the distribution of estimated workforce? According to European Wind Energy Association, each megawatt requires 15 employees. We are installing turbines. Do we need 15 people to install a turbine? This is not the case in the in Nordex installation process in Turkey. What are their phases? I will talk about them later on in my next slide. The target for 2000 is rather high considering that considering the 12 percent of the world energy is pro procured from wind energy. In manufacturing installation and work lines the target employment is 2.3 million. Especially for my university student friends, I believe this information is crucial. Which areas require employment? Of course, it starts with raw material. People can work at sites that form the raw materials of wind turbines, such as steel, iron, and fiber fiberglass. Manufacturing facilities require employment. The parts that constitute a turbine, the wing, the propeller, tower, nasal which is a little box on top of the tower, and the generator inside. These should be manufactured and this area requires employment. So what are the other processes? Project development is important. Workforce, micropositioning, finance, logistics, and installation, the phase after the completion of the project, which is the deployment of the turbine, and operating and maintenance phases after delivery to customer. So, how is a RESTA planning process? First of all, it starts with project planning, developing. What are these? Selection of a suitable field, wind analysis, feasibility preparation, detecting the suitable turbine according to the above data, micrositing, and then project financing phase, due diligence, economic analysis, agreements and contracts, searching for finance alternatives, and project realization process. What are these? Infrastructure construction, turbine mounting, mains unit connections, so what are we going to do after all this uh, finished and after the delivery to customer? Then comes operation and maintenance. These are trial operation and technical maintenance. What are we doing at Nordex? In my former slides I tried to make a global definition. Nordex is operating in Turkey beginning from the project phases of these processes. But our manufacturing facilities are in the global. The process initiated with the selection of the field in Turkey is followed by agreements, positioning, wind measuring, land survey, economic analysis, mains unit connection and environment authorizations. When we look at the educational status of the employees, we mainly work with electric engineers. They are followed by technicians. They are graduated from electric department of vocational high schools. Electric engineers are generally present and work in the project phases. For the technicians, we generally work with them in the maintenance phase.
because what distinguishes us in the market from other competitors is our service. We offer service guarantee of about 15 years. Following the delivery of turbine to the customer, we have two technicians at each field. They are always available to provide service and maintenance. These are followed by mechanical engineering, civil engineering departments. Civil engineers are generally work in the project phase because constructions are generally done in that phase. Machine, sorry, mechanical engineers are again in the project phase. These are followed by pharmacy and administrative sciences departments. Actually, when we look at the diagram, as our lecturer told us about, an energy systems engineer is getting the education of all these systems. I believe that this source is not available yet, yet because it's very new. For now, we prefer specific departments. I guess this is also the same for you, Sarkan Bey, right? I guess you also prefer specific departments when hiring new employees. So, how is Nordex human resources policy? Business definition, job definitions of employees are very important. This is very critical that everybody, that each employee should be aware of what he is doing in this sector because this sector is so niche, so new, sometimes definitions can be mixed up as multitask competencies are required. In long term we sometimes realize in some people that that they are saying what I, I, am I doing here, what is my job. Thus we are very assertive in our sector. Each employee is equipped with expert trainings in our company, does not indulge so much in other functions. We formed human resources management standards. We attach importance to occupational training after graduation. We hire new graduates, especially in the service department. We have training programs. We attach importance to interns in summer seasons. Their training is important for us and then we track them afterwards. How did we end up in this technology intensive sector? And when we think about what we can add to the presentation, I graduated from labor economics. One of the le lectures we used to take is that how we realized industrial revolution. How we move from an agricultural society to an industrial society and then how we did the information revolution. In the present we are an information society. We are working in the information, information century. We are all information workers. Agricultural revolution continued for a thousand years, industrial revolution 300 years, and we are experiencing information revolution and information age for the last century. Bill Gates ha has a book which is The Road Ahead. In the book he says discoveries that were used to done in a century in the past are now happening in a year. I agree with the lecturer that the energy systems engineering is a very crucial department. One of the greatest issues of us and our employees in HR department and the workforce is that we are looking for too many competencies all at once in the search for work workforce. We are not looking for engineers only. We also want this engineer actually to have a micro perspective, an excellent communication skill and an advanced level of English. We want this engineer to know finance. We want this engineer to well present the business in the meetings with customers. So all of them require too many qualifications. A core based electric engineer or a mechanical engineer may not be required to have such skills that may be present in another profession and I guess that will ease our work. 
Thus, my advice to you, especially to electric engineering and mechanical engineering students, except for energy systems engineers, to train themselves in as many areas as possible. Because, this is very important, because today human is a source very limited than the fuel in the world and very critical than the cap capital. This source is always decreasing, not increasing. The level of in education may increase both in Turkey and in the world, but the number of qualified workforce is decreasing. There are many reasons for this. Demographics, low birth rates, high number of elderly population, and somehow internet technology. So, it's very crucial for people to train themselves. Also, the support of universities is very critical. Energy has existed in Turkey for about 20 years, but energy systems engineering department has been available only for five to six years in Turkey. This shows that we are 15 years, we are following 15 years back, I mean the universities, unfortunately. Einstein has a saying, he says, insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So everybody has a responsibility to individually train himself or herself. We shouldn't expect anything from schools anymore, I think. The position we frequently look for is the sales. When you look at the portals or the newspapers, you frequently see search for sales. But there is no sales department in universities. Although these are the requirements, university education is following from backwards. But there are ways to catch this. We can very easily access information via internet or by developing network. I mean, you don't need to go to Harvard to graduate from Harvard University. You can do this by remote education. We just want to see the difference and the spirit in you. It's not so hard to be different. I have a memory. In a job interview, a candidate who is a student of civil engineering in Italy said that he applied to 24 companies up to now but nobody called him back and we started to ask more particular questions we realized that actually his biggest ideal is the city planning this person is graduated from civil engineering his ideal is to have a career in city planning but he's making these 24 applications with the same CV, he sends the same resume to, to Aolu, although he wants steep planning, and Aolu does not work in the steep planning. Again, he sends the same resume to the companies that operate in city planning area areas. Thus, at the end of the day, he feels pessimistic and thinks that, oh, I applied to 24 different companies and nobody called me back. When he came to me, he he was about to give up his city planning ideal and was on the edge of I can do whatever job you can offer me. We revealed this as we kept on speaking. So diff being different is critical always learn about the history of the companies you are going to do some search take a look at their websites just let them feel the spirit in you let hr departments or managers know what you actually want make them feel it there are so many interesting stories i heard the story from one of my colleagues a candidate goes to wako for a job interview this candidate started talking that Wako is a very powerful company in textile and he is or she is after this 
she's she's chasing this company for years and he's following Jim Boyna. He or she is a fan of him. But the boss of Wako is not Jim Boyna. It is Jim Hako. No matter how good the interview is, you lose due to this minor tints. Or sometimes you win due to this minor tints you do not realize. So before job interviews, you need to get information about the company and renew yourself during this process as much as possible. There are many portals, magazines, networks giving information about such things. So you need to subscribe to them and get informed and be different. Again, I definitely believe in the importance of universities in this subject. Politics is also very important. Again, another example. I was very surprised when I first heard it. So it's better you do not have so high expectations from your educational background. Again, I value self-training because universities fall behind, unfortunately. In mine engineering in Canada, the gross national product constitutes 4%. I mean, mine engineering constitutes 4% of GMP. There are six universities. Annual employment requirement is 120. Canadian universities, mining departments, each, each year graduate, graduate 90 students. And they employ 30 people by brain drain. When we look at the scenario in Turkey, there are 16 departments. Each year, 600 students are graduated. Mining industry constitutes 1.5% of the GMP. Thus, individual struggle is very important. Our expectations are not high because this sector is very tough. A couple of minutes ago, I showed you a wind map. Although in our job postings we look for the candidates with the best qualifications, we want the distance between the office and the residence to be short. We see in the job postings like Istanbul European side or Anatolian side is preferred. We do not have such a thing in our sector especially for the engineers. And I shared with you the wind map. I told you that it may reach up to Antalya, stating that it is mainly the Aegean region. We do not expect people working, mostly working in the sector to are actually living in Aegean region. No matter what, you are going to move away from your, resident, your residence. Your social life will change. You need to sacrifice a lot because you have nature in front of you. You are fighting against nature. The work stop when wind stops for days and for weeks long. Wind blows again and you have to work overnight. So you need to be very flexible in this sector. Your competencies are very crucial. Awareness is high. Yes, it is an attractive sector. But its, it's ex expectations are also high. Thus, you need to know yourself well, know the sector, and test whether you are suitable to this sector or not. Previously, they touched upon the positions to be searched for wind energy. In order to effectively use my time, I do not want to list them one by one. But it is already on the screen. Of course, there are many different opportunities for colleagues who receive education at different disciplines. Thank you. First of all, NRS Electric is a group company operating in all steps from manufacturing to retail of a chain in energy sector in the frame of vertical integration based model. We are both operators and investors and we are supporting human resources in these processes. Just to briefly mention, NRSL's installed capacity is about 
2300 megawatt as of today 212 megawatt comes from wind power plants we have three wind power plants in Balkesir, Mersin and Çanakkale we have regional consi consistency as you see as an example from real life when we look at 2020 projection the target of NRSAL in Turkey is to achieve 7500 megawatt installed capacity when we classify them as wind and solar our target is over 1000 megawatt what does it mean? we need to construct 600 to 700 megawatts wind more I guess this is a critical information if you think at the average this capacity depends so much on the region when you think of it from 50 megawatt NRSAL will be constructing 13 or 14 power plants in the next 7 years as of today the number of employees is 650 in NRSAL pro production company no, the number of employees in NRSAL group is 10,000 we have 9 million customers in, the, in 2012 projection we anticipate 650 reaches 1,200 again for the production company this is not in parallel with the megawatt installed capacity because out there there is a personal movement and activity we will slowly pass from operator um, investors perspective to operators side we are talking about a very profound increase we are talking about doubling in six to five years what are the job opportunities in renewable energy in our company as it is mentioned before and in parallel to our corporate identity there is business development project development project management coordination of construction and mounting and of course mainly operational maintenance and their roles Manu production planning and then pla marketing and sales examples to sectors include R&D designing equipment manufacturing service for operation and maintenance project financing and education in these areas we need qualified employees as an investor the required competencies or in the role of a manager what we ex what do we expect as our lecturer and Ban Hanum talked about we are mainly interested in university graduates and generally engineering faculty graduates we started to add energy systems engineers to our staff in parallel to the educational period but branch engineers are at the forefront because they have more experiences sector experience is a very crucial motive to prefer it's not that possible to persist on the five year thing but especially in renewable energy one to three years of experience is a motive for employer good level of english is a natural part of the job and also as i have said we actually are looking for very flexible and mobile people because where the location because the locations where the turbines and operations are situated are can be all around turkey and suitable for wind there are different regions for hydroelectric in the Aegean region it is difficult to operate while in the eastern Anatolia it is h hard to operate hydroelectric power plant but there, th this is, these are very huge investments and and makes you feel excited this is something that you do every day with joy and you contribute to the national economy these are mostly for white-collar employees 
when it comes to blue color these are branch graduates from occupational schools and vocational high schools from electric electronic and mechanical again you are looking for one to two, three years of experience but our expectation unfortunately is not only on the wind or the renewable energy energy power plant experience is a motive again they need to be mobile the colleagues we hire for operational purposes are going to leave the locations that i mentioned because their their responsibility is to operate the power plant the figures are very high and attractive as of today we have a problem of qualified and competent employee employees when we look at it with an investors or operators perspective we try to meet this requirement by having colleagues that have experiences in parallel areas gain more experience both inside and outside including them to the processes and educating them with on-the-job training we include colleagues working in engineering departments whom we think to comply with and those who are interested in projecting. And we try to meet a part of our white collar engineer and expert requirements from the inside. In the investment processes, as we are the investment owners and as we are giving out turnkey projects, this flexibility and this activity somehow yeah, meets our expectations but at the end of the day you receive service from a supplier and especially as manufacturing operations are conducted outside although they are locally positioned in Turkey for mounting and construction we frequently require foreign expert support these are of course crucial fields for employment but this also brings in some problems including work permit visa issues etc so this is a problem waiting to be solved in the blue colors this is mostly focused on operation and maintenance our business model operation and maintenance are generally conducted under long-term service agreements by equipment operators or a third-party group domestic source utilization is about switch operation however growth targets of turkey growth targets of inertia by the way it's not only about this subject such great dependence to supplier will probably become a problem so how much of this can we meet with domestic sources this should be the question to be asked later on the inclusion of domestic sources into this pro these processes will be discussed in regards to sustainability and cost in this respect our current possible solutions is our even if, even if it is not in renewable energy but it can be in other areas and in our sense operations have been conducted since 1996 we support energy management experience with domestic training we benefit from the experience of our partner EO we participate in universities and vocational high schools programs and processes we include in service agreements that will be conducted in the next period with supplier companies from whom we receive operation and maintenance service and we include some aspects under the approach of possible solution partnership to train domestic sources we conduct very detailed studies with function managers in HR. These are not related to HES, but we are thinking of the adaptation. We have a project that we have been practicing for about two years, which is technician school project. We are taking in inexperienced branch graduates, technicians, and give them some training. Then we included them to our power, sun, power, power plants. The first two were sent to hydro projects. 
This was how we met our technician requirements out there. We are planning the third group to be sent to the ongoing Tufan Bailey coal power plant after the new year. In accordance with the number of projects, we are planning of integrating this process into wind. And this is our agenda for the next periods ahead. Thank you. We thank Sarkan Bey again for his participation despite our short notice and also for the valuable information. Energisa is one of the leading companies in energy sector. I guess his speech was very beneficial for the friends here. Especially I would like to emphasize his one sentence. As a person who had been working in the academy and in private sector for 18 years, I completely agree with him. The ratio of love for the job in energy sector is incredibly high. You go to your office with joy. You long for the other day to come. I'm working in the investment side. Sarkan may too, because Energy Saw is a, in, as an investment company. You long for investments. You are making a product, and this product stands. And you feel very satisfied with this. And this is very important in Turkey. The ratio of people in Turkey who are doing the jobs they love is very less. So I advise you to come to this sector. You would not be disappointed. I would like to thank participants again and the panelists. Now we are on the questions and answers. Before asking uh, asking your questions, please tell us your name, your institution, and to which panelist you are asking to. Erdem Türkal, Klova Energy. My question is for Sarkan Bey. You talked about the endeavors to use local sources for service agreements. We also have some attempts about this, so I wonder at which level it is. Can you explain it further? Thank you. I am not a technical person. I am in the HR department, so I cannot give you a detailed information. For energy, in energy science in relevant sectors, we will focus on this subject matter more, for, I mean the service agreements. And I know that there are companies like yours that started doing this. I believe this will be discussed later in detail. But right now we don't have any board decision. I just wanted to express my opinion. 
I'll keep it short and I have another question to Oya. Oh, yeah. As you know, operation and maintenance costs are as high as investment costs, which affect feasibility, and investors require great amount of employment. But we can use this personnel in the maintenance agreements and decrease total cost. Do you have any studies regarding this? First of all, this is also my anticipation. Although outdoor service procurement is popular, I don't think this is very much suitable for our sector. Procurement of the new, new employment from the company internally, using this source uh, instead of outsourcing, will be beneficial both for costs and efficiency because the dynamics of this sector is different from the dynamics of another sector. It is not like manufacturing, for instance. As I said before, you are struggling against nature, and this makes calculations harder. What I'm going to say is not an official statement, but as an HR expert, I agree with Sarkhan. Outsourcing is not suitable for this sector. Our work is based on technology, especially in REST. Su supply of novel, including the abroad, I believe will not be cut in the long term. I guess this will be developed between solution partners. There are some companies that tried it, but we haven't seen any clear results yet. But I think the next subject will be this for the operation in REST. Thank you. Hello, I am Sarkan Ertem. I'm an aircraft engineer. I'm in the master's program in wind. My question is a simple engineering question. I am thinking about satellite designing. Satellite designing? Yes. As far as I know, turbine manufacturers are using satellites to provide employment. Is there such a practice in Turkey? Yes, these are so so new that I don't even know this. What is satellite designing office? I don't know what this is. If you can explain it to me, then I will give you an answer. What does the satellite design office do? Yes, R&D, robot, okay. At Nordex, we are not planning to do this in the short term, but we have production targets. We are, yes, installers, but we are going to construct manufacturing facilities also. And together with this, I guess, satellite designing office will be on the way. Thank you. Hello, Hilal Avcı, HR specialist from BCAC. Oya Hanım and Sarkan Bey will know this better, but I don't know if you worked previously in other sectors other than energy. I would like to ask what is the difference between the HR, wor HR works in a energy sector or the HR works in completely other sector. Thank you. I've been working in energy cell for five years. Before that, I worked in another manufacturing facility of Sabanji Group. I am a manufacturing oriented man. In the eyes of human resources, there are some differences due to the development phase of energy sector. This is my opinion. We have a rather integrated approach in our HR departments in Sabanja Group. We are trying to sustain the same quality level at in all facilities, but as a result of the developing phase, the competition it is facing in the sector due to technological advancements, in Elbistan, for for instance, you are constructing hydroelectric power plants. Mm. Square kilometers remain under water, and there comes relations with the local people and local development processes. So I believe there are differences in regards to diversity and dimension. You need to be in it. As Sarkan Bay, I also had experience in manufacturing in the past. But I think human resources is very valuable in this sector.
because human is a valuable source because the workforce in the in the sector is not meeting the expectations and thus the ideal of HR employees is to make HR department a strategic partner of the management in energy sector the HR department is the strategic decision partner of the senior management is the change of titles easy in the macro perspective I do not think it will be so difficult it is easy to pass from manufacturing to energy sector but of course if you have manufacturing experience but if you are working in an HR department of a sales company then there will be some problem thank you thank you hello Mustafa Dönmez after completing my master's degree in Turkey I studied doctorate in Germany in energy sector after being a student a lecturer and a researcher in the business now I've been work uh, I'm working in a German company in, in, a, in energy sector I'm responsible from Turkey as a suggestion to the panel my doctorate study was used by Siemens in a um, Chinese project Germany is very successful in this business and one of the reasons is that you know is the university and industry cooperation so I believe the companies operating in this sector should cooperate with the universities that are providing the such kind of training but this should be fast Germany is doing this slowly because Germany has the power to handle this both financially and in regards to the number of employees so I believe Turkey should try to reach its target rapidly so for the Emin lecture I believe you are wasting the first two and a, two to two and a half years of that four-year education with general engineering practices and formation so for the energy engineering the student has only one and a half or two years left and these mostly are not efficient for companies who are trying to hire competent employees I believe this can be done by non-thesis master's program conducted on weekends and at night or by vocation schools but universities should meet the expectations of the market there are all about 30 universities but the opportunities are limited because after graduation some students say what I'm gonna do now so I want to mention this actually I would like to thank my colleague university life is such an experience that yes you got the formation but then the student should know what he or she is going to do with the information they obtained she said that universities fall behind yes they do but how are the universities going to get ahead this is going to be done with the cooperation of industry and universities I worked as a consultant before my consultancy experience I thought that the valve in the power plant resembles to a valve in our house but when I get into it I realize that that valve is as big as this room so this valve is run runs hydraulically what I mean is that universities and industry should cooperate industrial people should come closer to universities we are trying to do this in Bahçeşehir University we have facility programs we are trying to establish a kind of relation but for years there has been a debate between the universities and the industry and we never come to a conclusion only some lecturers strive to do something a student should know what this lecture is about actually when I start giving like giving a lecture I cannot stop myself I cannot 
and the lecture. Because during my consultancy and during my cooperation with the industry, there are some things that I've seen out there. So I begin to explain it to my students. When you start to talk about, for instance, differential in a facility, then you see that the student begin, begins to pay attention to you. So universities and industry should cooperate. Thank you. Actually, undergraduate thesis does not gain so does not mean so much to universities. In Turkey, especially in master's and doctorate programs, thesis that neglects comp companies operating in the market, but academically rele relevant are, I think, some kind of source wasting. Now, I want to add something, I agree with you, but compared to our, our period, the cooperation between universities and the industry is much higher. Many lecturers are working as consultants for big companies. Companies do not ask for guarantee, guarantees only from the state, but also from the universities. So I can say there is a do, uh, an improvement. Also, this wasn't mentioned here, but I think this would be the one of, one of the best solutions to your question. But I'm talking about the internship. Internship, unfortunately, is not used effectively in Turkey or at least it was so in my period. I lived in the US for two, 11 years. It is highly probable that you work in the that you are going to work in the company that you once was an intern because you see the practice, not the theory. And this internship brings you a lot, lot of information and the employer recognizes you also. So after graduation, we generally work in the company that we formerly worked as an intern. But I do not experience this in Turkey, uh, but I don't know the present situation. In my period, the interns are doing the errands or the internship is done as a fake internship, but this is not the same in foreign countries. You really do something and learn something. You cannot learn anything without practicing. Of course, internship is very critical. In our university we have call lectures. We provide lectures jointly with companies. For instance, Nordex comes and gives a lecture and then goes. We don't interfere. And then they may, afterwards, hire one of our students after graduation. And that way, students begins, begin to learn about the market. The number is over 100. So let's come together and open a co-lecture. Let's teach them how to prepare a feasibility report because students do not learn this in the ordinary lectures. This can be done only if the experienced people come, come there and give lectures. The second aspect is companies should produce their own know-how. When you expand to the foreign market, you cannot copy what they are producing and sell them to them. Sell it to them. You need to create your own information and knowledge. So you need to benefit from universities. Companies want a quick response. They are doing a research and these researches can be long term. We are telling companies to give us some time. If you do, then we will do this. Otherwise, then you are going to pay for the R&D that the foreign people are doing. Everybody in Turkey is paying for this. When you look at the new products, there is the R&D department behind it. 
Thank you. My name is Hüseyin Atabek. I, I come from Kocaeli Atatürk Industrial Vocational High School. In our school, we have a new energy technologies division. We have two branches. One of them is wind energy. Our aim is to bring up qualified and competent staff in wind energy sector. My question is for Oya Hanım and Saikan Bey. Can we cooperate? with your vocational training activities. For the time being, I cannot give you a positive answer, but I would like to get to know you. We can discuss what kind of cooperation we can provide, and we can discuss your division. Why not? Thank you. Such an invitation should be accepted. Izmit is where Energy Star was born. I would like you to discuss this with our technical team. Look for cooperation. We solved this employment problem internally in hydroelectric and coal, but in wind we need support. So it can be a good opportunity. Thank you. I thank you. Do you have any other questions? This is Shevan Dikman. I am third grade student in Energy Systems Engineering in a university. My question is to a lecturer. I would like to receive information about energy identity. Will there be an obligation to oppose this? And, and I have another question. Will we have signing authority in energy systems engineering? Thank you. Thank you. I will start from the last question. The biggest problem of our students is to which chamber they are going to subscribe. Am I going to sign this, etc. Chamber of Electric Engineers are saying just come and subscribe to us. On the other hand, Chamber of Mechanical Engineers saying the same. So we gathered them. So we say that the students should choose where to subscribe, but they didn't accept this. This is still discussed by engineers, engineer, en engineering stu chambers union. But now you can subscribe to Chamber of Mechanical Engineers. This is a very big issue, actually. For the other question, you are opening an energy systems engineering department, but you do not give them signing authority. But you are giving this authority to mechanical engineers, electric engineers, etc. But finally, they started to give the document you talked, you, the certificate you said. The law has changed as far as I know. Thank you. We can take a, the, a final question. Hello, Damatomeri. As for the internship, inaudible. For instance, the time period for internship in your university is long, so you work during this internship. It is the same for master's program. Do you think of developing this internship? I guess in order to cooperate, we need to do some improvements in internship. Actually, we want to take the students and teach them something. Can I ask another question? Yes, of course. My name is Unal Kurt. I am deputy dean in technology faculty of Amasya University. Actually, I wanted to talk about this before. As you know, technology faculties were established in Turkey. Our lecturer talked about how many energy engineers there are. I am the head of department of electric electronic engineering. I would like to give you the program of technology faculties. It is the same as engineering departments. Applied courses are more are tougher. Our students last year went to uh, office training. This will be the practice. And above that we have internship. So for the continuity of internship we have a, we have such an application. For instance, a student student completes its internship for a year, then come back to our university and study for another period, and then graduate. Hope this will be beneficial. We are trying to solve this with COPE because in COPE lectures, the courses are given directly by the company. So the, no the more the number increases, the better it is. 
so the number of universities have, has increased, but the number of companies is limited. When we have each student do internship for 30 days or 60 days, then com companies do not like this. Then companies say, you don't come, but we will sign it, sign the paper for you. I remember my own pupillage. We had to work actually. We signed the papers and they gave us fee, but they expected something in return. But we are always discussing this with our friends and colleagues. Make our students work when they come to you. This is the problem. The, the intern is just wandering around doing nothing. These are the problems. But unfortunately this internship problem is going to increase. We may get some support from state institutions. But again, I request from companies to take our students and make them work so that they should experience the difference of business life. Otherwise, they lack any discipline. Thank you. We are ahead of our time. Another session will begin, so I thank you. Yani şimdi biz bunu birlikte çalıştığımız 
Kod'da birlikte çalıştığımız firmalara, dostlara yine hep anlatıyoruz. Bizim çocuklara, biz kendimiz için konuşuyoruz. Geldiklerinde bunlara ciddi olarak iş yapıyoruz. Yani bütün sıkıntı burada. Adam ortalıkta dolaşıyor. İşe mani oluyor. Yani bizde gelen şeylere baktığında bu gibi sorular var. Sorunlar var. Yani bu maalesef staj problemi giderek de büyüyor. Mesela yani o yüzden devlet kuruluşlarından hiç olmazsa bir destek alıp da çocukları oraya yapıyorlar. Ama yine firmalara mevcudan dönüm dedikten alın dedi sayıda alın ama yükleyin. Yani iş hayatının farklılığını görsün. O zaman disipline de olmuyor. Buyurun Bayrak. Teşekkür ederim. Bizi epey bir açtık. Sonra çok da başlayacak. Çok teşekkür ederiz.